So I'd like to introduce um, something that's commonly uh, seen when you go to Burma, in Thailand, um, Malaysia or Sri Lanka. Um, especially focused in Burma, they talk about 10 protective charts that are used in many uh, things. I saw a, an American temple that was Burmese based, I think in Los Angeles, but they were saying basically to become a Buddhist monk in a Burmese style, you have to already know these by heart. I mean, it's very common that uh, people who are raised in a Buddhist culture already do know these by heart. If they're taken into a temple or taken novicehood when they're very young, they learn them from memory. So, uh, often uh, an insight meditation center, they will chant these for during the lunch times or the evening chanting, and they're the most familiar ones to Theravadan heartland um, practitioners and people. So, chanting is about faith. So it's not when you look at some of the sort of scientific sites, it's often rooted culturally and it's often used for different things. Protection is one of them. You can obtain some degree of jhana through doing it. It's much easier therefore uh, from indigenous people who one look or one thought about it and often they'll go into very deep concentration because of the quality of faith in their mind at that point. And it can be more difficult for people it's new to or not, it depends on the temperament. Uh, these six practices, Buddha recollection, Dharma recollection, Sangha recollection, Chaga recollection, recollection of generosity, of your own generosity or the nature of your, uh, having done at least two simple good deeds and just recording them, even tiny things with love, of your own um, morality, of that you're, you're clearing up your acts since before, of the existence of devas to observe and recall and record what you, you do. So all of these recollections support uh, first jhana and uh, are recommended as daily practice of the 40. Morning, and this is done in morning and evening chanting. So. Ten basic protective chants. Here's the Pali names of them. The Mangala Sutta, the Ratana Sutta, Metta Sutta. I'll give you the English names of them afterwards, but this is just an introduce you to the names of them. The Kanda Sutta, the Mora Sutta, Vata Sutta, Dajaga Sutta, Atanatiya Sutta, Angulimala Sutta, and the Bojanga Sutta. So you're going to, you, may, you may have come across the Mangala Sutta and the Metta Sutta, some of the Ratana Sutta, but this list of ten is often done systematically uh, in Theravada countries. So let's have a look at what they're about and where they come from. So the Kudaka is the short uh, passages in the Pali Canon. And here we can find um, a list of nine given there. But what I like is here where it gives um, the names of some of these suttas. Here it's got like the Maha Mangala Sutta. But where it comes from, where you can find it in the suttas, like why are you chanting in the morning? Where did that come from? Who started that off and who chose which ones to do sort of thing? So where is the Ratana Sutta? Okay, and what did the, did the Buddha actually say we should do this and so on? So the reference to it can be found in these places and that's very good to know. So where did the Metta Sutta come from? What's the, what's the discourse about it? How did it start off? And what did the, was it really the Buddha saying about doing it? So these are the places where you find them. The Kanda Paritta, the protection of the aggregates and so on. And there's another one <coughs> here, which includes for example, the Arata Natiya Sutta, which you come to, which is a bit of an interesting one. So these are the places where we find the sources of the suttas. So one thing that's actually been going on there is, and Dajiga is there, which comes from this uh, place. What's going on there is that at some point down in history, somebody said it's really good to read some suttas a day or recall some really powerful, inspiring ones. These are the ones we recommend every day. And if you do it in the morning and you do it at night, you're going to get sort of like a boost of, of uh, you know, of energy and boost of, of uh, reflection. Uh, and it's that important, they're that important if you do them repeatedly. It's going to grow on you, it's going to build it up like that. So these. Ten basic predicted charts. Mangala is on blessings. It's 38 ways of um, having a future happiness. So, for example, of avoiding fools. Because if you do hang out with fools, you're likely to get drunk, you're likely to get gambling, you're likely to fight, you're likely to get into fights, you're likely to meet people who they'll take you off uh, with play, uh, to be a playboy or speeding with cars or shooting guns or stuff like that. You know? 
So you don't want that sort of thing. So Mangala is to reflect about all the different aspects of what the Buddha defined the blessing to be, and then you can even count your blessings because you're keeping them up. The Ratana Sutta on the jewels, which I talked about, at Vesali, where there was this play. The Metta Sutta, radiating love and uh, goodwill in the, all the te- ten dire- directions. Kanda Sutta is used actually a lot to protect against snakes and scorpions and spiders and kind of things, but it's, a, it's that kind of a reflection. More is an inter- interesting one, I want to look at that a little bit later on. It's the Peacock Sutta, and this involves a peacock uh, knowing its own past lives, uh, having been a, um, a royalty in a past life and having made misdemeanors and getting reborn as a peacock and going back and meeting an existing um, royalty and convincing them that he really had a, can recall his past lives by showing him where there's a, uh, a vehicle under the lake and the, the royal royalty gets the, the lake drenched and they find this vehicle under there. It's actually described almost like a UFO, <laughs> what it actually is. It's like, like a, a vehicle that can fly through the air and covered in jewels. It's, it's kind of an interesting one. It's the peacock giving the discourse? Yeah, yeah wow. the, what happens was that, I'll, I'll, show, I'll show you the full story, where the queen has a brilliant dream about the peacock It's giving a sermon of, of the Dhamma and teaching and all these people listening and it's a gold-coloured peacock. And she, she hassles the uh, husband saying, come on, we've got to find it, yeah, but I want to see, I want to hear this, it's such an amazing uh, event. And so um, the king puts out the words to all of the, the meditators, these yogis out in the caves, and they say, you'll have to ask the hunters, they're the ones who know where they are. And one of them actually finds where it is and uh, goes and hunts, it, uh, hunts them down, but they can't ever capture it, it's too wise and it's too clever, and none of the snares work, because it's got such powerful aura. Like this. And it talks about how it's getting its uh, magic from, from meditating on the sun and the moon and during the, the sun and night before it, it does it. And so it's a very powerful method um, of making these wishes for protection. And uh, they send in a female peacock who makes the, 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 the singing song and it forgets to do the protection. And it goes, oh, very nice. And it goes off and then it gets caught. And when it gets caught, it gets taken to the king and tells its own story about its past lives. And the king doesn't believe it, so they're making it up, you know, you ain't a king, before, and it's like, uh, and so on. And it shows him this way to find this uh, bejeweled uh, flying machine that's at the base of the lake. The peacock spoke human? It spoke pretty good human. In Pali? <laughs> yeah, really. He gets better than us. They get the animal communicator in, they can speak everything. They can speak uh, baboonish. And, uh, I'm going to research that. You can. If you do, you look on YouTube, peacock, talking peacock, there's some people who, and they're speaking to a peacock. I saw it. But what they, they speak, they, they make the animal noise like, and this thing goes, <laughs> <laughs> The quail is a story about a, a baby quail, fragile, quivering little baby quail. The mother, mother parents once have gone off to do like getting worms and stuff to bring back. And while it's there, um, a forest fire starts, and the forest wall of fire is advancing, and it's stuck against uh, the, the water edge, and it can't go in, it will drown in the water. And so it makes a wish of truth, an asseveration of the truth, that according, you know, like, uh, my love is pure, my truth is pure, just by the power of this wish, may the fire uh, recede and not burn me, and protection is, is about the power of such a making an asseveration, and it stops. The, the fire doesn't burn quite. So these wishes of aspiration, when you keep, no matter what happens around you, all the people and everything that comes and goes, if you are truthful, and if you're righteous, and if you're pure in heart and body and mind, you can make an aspiration like this and you won't be calm. There's the, 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 an attack on a bus, on people going home, and they attacked everyone out the way and left the two people who just come from the meditation. We had a meditation and then, mm-hmm. Um, to the people that were with us, Ivy. I guess you've heard the story before. Right? Mm-hmm. Ivy and her boyfriend. Uh, right after Thursday, they uh, rode the bus and the bus. In front of the bus was a guy, guy with a gun. The back of the bus is a guy with a two, uh, ice right. pick. Yeah. And uh, they were all like getting money from everybody. And then for some reason, they thought that they were ready to give their their things to these guys, but they didn't want to just went off as if they were invisible. So 
uh, the, the two guys went down. The robbery was over and they didn't give their money at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the ice pick that mystifies me. How do you get a ice pick in the, ice in the Philippines? It's very warm, isn't it? Well, the guy Maybe they've got some very good issues in the Himalayas and they're trying to save up money to go and catch a pick up. <laughs> the guy, the, the one on the right side of them, right across them, was the guy they put an ice pick on the neck. Uh, so in other words, right across, right across them, obviously the guy could see them and behind them, they still got the money. They kind of skipped them. Good vibes, protection. Ten directions. Yeah. <laughs> You just put the ring on the ten direction and vanish. No one does. <laughs> yeah, that is really okay, okay, okay. Talking of which, <laughs> this next one, Dajik Asante, is I told you that if you understand the emotion of the charm, it makes all the difference. Otherwise, you can read it and just confuse it. You know, it doesn't make much sense. Dajik Asante, summoning up energy to be with Gandalf and the others all around you in battle. But you're not alone. This is the thing. You See? Yeah, you with the ice pick, you shall not pass. <laughs> <laughs> you and you must have gone off the grave. You haven't got a bus purse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then you can get off the white. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So like along this line, I did a, I did a, a compilation of some pictures to go with this next one because they're talking about looking at the crest of the banner. You know, you've got these sort of great poles with a flag, and, and to look at the top and uh, of the main arahants. You know, that, that arahant, you just look at that, and then you won't shake. You know, if you look at the enemy and you think, oh, I'm all alone, we're going to get beaten up. But if you just look at the crest of the banner and follow that, it's kind of like a common sort of summing up for battle. You know, battle courage like this. So I, I got these images. Um, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll come to that afterwards. I thought I'd put it in there. I'll, I'll come back to it. Sorry, my mistake. Artanatia is a difficult one. It's called psychic protection. It's one of the earliest suttas because it's in the Diganikaya. <laughs> but to understand how that psychic protection works, you have to understand a lot about the Brahminical vision of the world in that area because they're summoning up, they're asking for protection from Kuvara. King Kubra. King Kubra were, was one of the most powerful real kings who lived up in the valleys up around Mount Saneru. All of this revolves around the, the thinking and the beliefs around Mount Saneru, where we looked at earlier on Michael and Kailasa, like that. But not only Kubra, but the main most powerful overlords that were in that area. And it was basically asking them for your protection. A lot. So those then become the Chati Maharajika, like for deities as well. So they're like invisible and super powerful uh, looking down as well. So it involves a lot of things that are very Tibetan ish. Uh, um. Anguli Mana, I think uh, it's about birth protection if you're pregnant and you want to have a safe pregnancy. Because he was someone who was involved with so much malicious murder and he completely flipped to become a saint, an Arahant. It's just that, you know, if you're offering anything to him or in his vicinity or someone who's that, you, you, you've come across someone ultra pure, ultra pure, even if you were, even if you were doing a, you were a washer person nearby, doing a bit of cleaning, and you offer, you know, just, just even touch the water and you're in the, their aura, you would be very much blessed. So if you're a, someone bearing a child and you're around that sort of energy, you're very safe. By Django, the enlightenment factors. So then, modern times, what these are used for in Theravada countries, they're actually used for certain things and believed to have certain powers for certain different things. So this is just to report one. I can't verify whether always this is the case. I think sometimes it is, sometimes it's a bit superstitious, but that's not for my, uh, me to say. I just want to point out the traditional use of these in the main Theravada countries. Mangala Sutta should bring both blessings and prosperity. You won't waste your money if you avoid gamblers, and if you avoid drinkers, you won't waste your money and so on. And uh, prosperity physically and spiritually. Ratana, because it's associated with this famine, it's uh, protection against disease, famine, and evil spirits. And actually, evil spirits were supposed to be the cause of the famine to arise in the first place, according to the Sutta. Metta, peaceful nights. People come with nightmares, they can't sleep. Metta is supposed to be really a deep sleep. <laughs> Kanda, protection against snakes, etc. It actually mentions in that sort of kings of snakes of different kinds uh, as well. For you to, to wish them love and harmony and 
Often, I mean, there was, a, there was a sutta where a monk died of a snake bite, and the Buddha said, but well, he, he, he wasn't using uh, metta. Probably he was sitting at the back of the, the crowd and was sort of like throwing sticks and stones at a, a snake. Probably that was it, and it came back to attack. In my experience, snakes want to be left alone. They don't like the, the presence of humans, but they just want to be left alone. But if you go looking for them with a stick, you go, no, I want to find it, and I'm going to whack it with a stick, and I'm going to pick it up. You know, like you, you're likely to get bitten. Um, but usually they don't come looking for it. So if you're, if you're already thinking of a mind to wish them love and harmony and benefit, then when you meet them, you only wish them the same thing. Mora, the peacock against dangers. Vata, against fire. Dajiga, against fear and terror. So here we go. Helm's <laughs> Deep. Is this Helm's Deep? Yes, it's Helm's Deep, exactly. So when your meditation looks like this, then you should do the Dajiga. <laughs> 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 All of the uh, paranoias and inner conflicts. <laughs> and you've got Sariputta, let's tell you, okay, I know it's not Sariputta, but you've got someone who really knows how to handle, how to handle a sword by you, who's brave and courageous and, and wise and all that sort of stuff, not fools with you. You've got people who are noble and can handle themselves. You've got a brave group with you. You're not alone. So this is the kind of thought to summon up and to look uh, you know, in that kind of way. That's the thinking of it. You've got Gandalf, the wizard. Now what he can't do, he can fight off flying dinosaurs. You know what I can't do? <laughs> With his illuminating crystal. So you know, we've got crystals, we've got everything here. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That feeling you get when you see Gandalf during the Battle of Helm's Deep. So. <laughs> it's not all over after all. We're still in with a fighting chance. Yeah. Gandalf the White has emerged from Balrog's chasm. Indeed. Uh, yeah. So he's the sort of symbol of that pure chitta, you know, your pure metta, pure uh, sati, pure mindfulness. When that arises, all of the conflicts, all of the degenerate, weak, feebling, troubling states of mind vanish. I don't know. So everything that's been eating away, the paranoia, the doubts, the nerves, the, the petty uh, things that are making our life uh, invaded, all the poisons. So that's the idea of that one. Atanatiya against evil spirits, so it's psychic protection, things like they call like yakas, you know, things that will come, come up like very powerful monsters and so on. So it's very much in that kind of language. And Gulimana, easy pregnancies. And Bhajanga, freedom from pain and sickness. So that the, 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 um, arahants have great pain in the body, so you can become an arahant of the mind, but not an arahant of the body. Uh, you still get uh, great pain and sickness, but the Bhajanga aims to be able to take your mind through it and concentrate. Okay, so a little bit about the ten uh, main sutras.